And the fact of the matter is, Kieran Tierney is not tactically versatile enough to do what Arteta needs him to do. Okay, you've seen the title. You want to write your hate comments? Just hear me out, all right? And I've got a missing tooth, so be nice. There is no doubting Kieran Tierney's status as a fan favourite. He encapsulates pretty much anything a fan would want to see from their player, right? Strong leader, competitor, there's the whole shorts in winter thing. You know, he's got a real vibe about him, right? In the open mic video that Arsenal released last year, Tierney comes across really, really well. And you can see the passion and the commitment that he brings to the club. And to be honest, at a time where fans felt disconnected for lots of reasons, Emery's downfall, the pandemic, poor performances under Arteta, off-field stuff, executive change and more. Kiarantini massively caught the eye as someone who's a complete antidote to all that. But the fullback position is changing in front of our very eyes. To quote Jamie Carragher from 2013, you're either a failed winger, winger or a failed, failed centre-back. Um, for a long time, that was probably partly true, but then uh, Pep Guardiola came in. And although tactics are kind of just an evolution of what came before, so it's unfair to say he invented the inverted fullback. He certainly popularised it with the likes of Alaba and Lam at Bayern, and it set off a bit of a cultural conversation about what a fullback is and can be. More recently, Trent Alexander-Arnold continues to excel in attack value added from his position on the right. Joao Cancelo's inversions create devastation and overloads, and even Ronald Araujo and even Ronald Araujo, easy for me to say, typically a centre-back, caused Real Madrid a whole host of problems in the most recent El Clasico. Basically, what a fullback is, is kind of going through a bit of a referendum at the moment, and every manager is now striving to make the most out of what was previously seen as a bit of a dull position, Arteta included. When Arteta arrived at Arsenal, Kiarantini provided a useful attacking outlet for a team struggling to create a high volume of chances. Arsenal had a significant left-sided bias. It made sense to rely on Kiarantini at the time, especially with Bukayo Saka on that side. He has excellent ball striking technique, meaning he can score goals and cut back as well as deliver really accurately. He has an amazing engine and he's able to get up and down the pitch to do both sides of the job. And Kiarantini is by no means a bad player. I, I want to put that across. I really like Kiarantini. Real Madrid are reported in for him and he's probably worth the quoted 50 million. So why sell? As Arteta's teams have progressed and he's managed to rebalance it and get a bit more attacking value added on the right hand side, Tini's role as a combiner and outlet in the final third has started to become less and less relied upon. Among other things, Arsenal are now more comfortable going centrally with the additions of Benjamin White and Aaron Ramsdale, have quick combinations orchestrated by Martin Odegaard on the right, and now make more use of the overload, playing down one side and then switching to the other. But with that development, the role of the fullbacks in this team has changed. To compete with the big boys now, Arteta has to be requiring more from his fullbacks, including more tactical flexibility. And the fact of the matter is, Kieran Tierney is not tactically versatile enough to do what Arteta needs him to do. Let me explain. Kieran Tierney is heavily one-footed, does not excel or often opt to pass infield, and rarely switches the play. Though his athletic profile is fine. He doesn't have the size or pace really to compete at the top ends of those kind of metrics. He also struggles with aerial duels. He's not majorly comfortable in tight spaces and his attacking output when you look at the stats is not particularly impressive. Though his assist data is above average, his pass completion is distinctly average and his non-penalty XG is below average when compared with other fullbacks in the top five leagues. His pressure and tackle metrics are some of the worst in Europe's top five leagues. Given his dues, that may be because of his role in the team. Tini wasn't an Arteta signing. The fullback signings that Arteta has opted for have universally been players who, though they may have a preference, are comfortable with both feet and with a variety of passing and receiving angles on the pitch in Takira Tomiyasu, Nuno Tavares, and Cedric Suarez. Jesus. This gives us more of a clue of what Arteta actually likes from his fullbacks and perhaps more of an understanding of what he's kind of aiming to do moving forward. I mentioned tactical flexibility. Watching Man City, the team most like Arsenal in terms of style and principles of play, if not quality, the central spine generally remains consistent while the external personnel shift dependent on opponent. Guardiola might choose Walker to sit as the third centre-back and leave him kind of isolated to commit more people forward because he's got really good recovery pace. Famously, he kind of plays Cancelo inverted so he can combine a bit more in the interior and progress the ball. Or, for example, John Stones might be selected there to deal with a particularly tricky winger uh, and add some, some kind of aerial presence in those zones. The point is, different game states need different things, and you need different players to fulfill different functions. And Arteta will want to do that as well. Arteta plays positional play, juego de posición, great video here if you haven't seen it, and that inherently requires consistent rotations from players into different areas of the pitch. Kiarantini is not that comfortable on many angles or in that many positions, really. Picture him in your head. He's hugging the touchline high and wide, right? That's where he's best, and that's fine. 
but is that enough? The reason Takahiro Tomiyasu has been such a revelation in Arsenal's defence this season is because he fulfills a number of specific important functions to the success of the team at a very high level. He's able to roll around into a three in the build-up and is one of the best in the league for aerial duels, something Arsenal were really missing. Kieran does have strengths, but he's neither an all-rounded fullback who can do a job in every tactical setup, nor so good at a couple of kind of fundamental things like Trent Alexander-Arnold that you can kind of negate the other stuff. Having good deliveries is no longer enough. You have to provide options to be able to combine in field, push further forward, go further back, shift into different zones. I mean, take Nuno Tavares. Once he has some experience under his belt, he looks like he could be a really good option. He's strong, tall, able to combine, invert, go on the outside, win headers, and adds a lot of attacking value. He can get you 50 yards up a pitch in one run. Once or if he's coached to cross a ball well and kind of improve his defensive positioning, I don't really see what Tierney adds over him. As a starting fullback, do I see Arteta with Tini able to push him around into a three, sit him further up, have him as a wing back, and push him into the midfield in one game? I can't see that happening. And those options have to be available, especially with the principles that Arteta plays with. But forget all that for a second. When offers are on the table for a significant player at a significant price, you have to look at it. Don't forget, we've been burned so many times by not taking money for a decent player who just isn't quite right for us at the right time. You have to ask yourself, is Kiarantini the starter for Arsenal? Is, is Kiarantini a championship title winning defender for Arsenal? And this is all before mentioning his injury issues. Well, I sort of tend to be quite patient on that sort of stuff. Can we rely on a man who has missed 50 competitive games for Arsenal since joining us? That's over a season worth of football, a third of his football in three seasons. Look, would Tierney's output be different if we had Dominic Calvert-Lewin or a big centre forward? Absolutely. An aerial threat in the box, would he benefit from having someone other than Granit Xhaka in the left channels? Absolutely. I actually think if he doesn't go this summer, he's probably going to have an explosion next season because the players around him will be better. But the best teams in the world don't swing balls into the box consistently. It's a really low XG way of making chances. It's part of a game plan, might get you a couple of goals a season. And if you've got the right personnel, it can definitely be a weapon. But if Arteta's recent systems and the way he's recently set up or anything really to go by, it doesn't feel like the way he's going with it. And crucially, ball delivery can be coached to an extent. A uh, physical profile is what it is. To be clear, I love Tierney, as I say, and I was really happy when he got a new contract. And there's no doubt that the sort of his attitude behind the scenes is really engaging and I love it as a fan. It's also smart asset management to give him that contract, something we've not done before. But am I convinced that say 50, 60 million from Real Madrid, for example, couldn't be spent on a level raiser, a game changing left back who can give us a lot more of what we really need as opposed to Tierney? And considering this current recruitment team's talent ID and their sort of track record and this kind of stuff, I really kind of trust them. Kieran, I love you, nothing against you, but I think it might be best for both parties. Let me know what you think in the comments. Please subscribe, there'll be more of these videos. Um, and I might have a tooth soon, so cheers.